I'm David Meller, Course Director of Audio Masterclass. If you want to improve the standard of your work in your home recording studio, you might be interested in our music production and sound engineering course, which you can check out at audiomasterclass.com. But here we have a kick drum. Okay, what I'm going to do is compress this kick drum in a variety of ways. But first, let's make a copy of this track, which we can come back to later. Okay, we'll keep that one and I'll work on this one. I'm going to find an individual drum hit. The reason for that is it'll make the explanation easier to understand. Let me just find that. Okay, I think I know which one I want already. Because I have listened to this before, curiously enough. I think it's this one here. The reason I want that one is because uh, there's not much going on in this region. So it's just the kick drum. Whatever I do to this, I'm going to apply it to the whole track. But this is just going to make it easy for, for me to explain what I'm doing. So let's just uh, tighten in on that. And we'll go from there. To there. And I'm going to make that a region in its own right. So I'm using Pro Tools here, but this kind of thing you can do with any digital audio workstation. And I'll get rid of that. And I'll get rid of that. And what I'll do now is I'm going to make three more duplicates of that just as it is because I want to process the kick drum in three different ways and compare it with the original. So let's look at this one here. Okay, that's nice. Let's uh, zoom in on it and I'm going to make it a bit bigger so that I can see, so that I can see what I'm doing. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to compress it in a rather strange way. I'm going to use automation to do that. When you think about it, compression is just the changing of level or gain over time, and automation is the changing of level or gain over time. So they're doing the same thing pretty much. So whatever you can achieve with compression, you should be able to achieve with automation. It's just a more long-winded way of doing it. So. You couldn't do this to the entire drum track, not unless you've got way, way, way too much time on your hands. But just as an experiment, it's worth having a go. And I recommend that you try it yourself. In Pro Tools, we do have this feature called Clip Based Gain, which I'm going to use here. But you can, if you use a different digital audio workstation, you can just use the regular automation and it will achieve the same thing. So I'm going to zoom right in on this, this waveform. If we zoom in a bit further, you can see that this is the actual waveform. So that's the first cycle of the drum hit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a break point in just about here and a break point in just about here. And the other one I'm going to put in just about here though, so we'll bring that up. Let's just condense it down a bit. That's uh, it's more like it. So that's the kind of thing that I'm wanting, that I've got that sharp peak right at the beginning of the drum. So let's hear it and compare it. Let's just go over there. Let's compare it with the original. So we can hear I've got a, a much sharper attack to the sound. And I'm just going to bring 
bring this down a bit. Let's just get rid of those breakpoints that I built and get the iron ones. And we'll bring that one down. So what I've done, if you compare it with this one, which is the original, is I've brought up the initial peak of the drum and then I've actually brought it down lower than it was originally. So you can see where the gain line is there and you can see where the gain line is there. So let's listen again. And the original. So we've got a sharper attack to it. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to bring up the sustain part of the waveform. So I'm going to put another break point in round about here and we'll bring that up to around about there. Let's see what that sounds like. So down there again. So we can hear it's bringing up the release of the drum. Well, that's interesting. I've got to say that for, day, for today, though, that's too much. Okay, let's stick with that. Okay, that will do it for that example. Let's move on to something else. I'll just go back to um, a smaller size of that. Let's just hear it once more. Okay, let's go on to this one, which we haven't processed yet. So that's the original. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a compressor in, and this is going to be the Waves CLA76, which is a plug-in emulation of the URI or the Universal Audio 1176. And we'll use the blue version, and I'm going to switch the analog hum and noise off because I just don't want it. And let's put a ratio of 8 to 1. 8 to 1, a compression ratio of 8 to 1. And let's just see what it sounds like, just like that. Okay, it's starting to sound a little bit interesting already, but we can uh, we can get some more out of this. Let's uh, play first with the attack control. So on this compressor, when you go to the uh, high numbers, that represents a fast attack, and the low numbers are a slow attack. So that's the opposite of most compressors, where you'd expect that to be a fast attack. It's not the way that it works here. Let's go to the fastest attack we can. I'm just going to speed up that release for the moment. We'll come back to the uh, release later on. Oh, just a bit more. Okay, so the attack. So you can hear that little bit of a clicky sound right at the beginning of it, and that's the thing that I'm looking for. I'm looking for a difference in the sound texture of this drum. And let's have a little play with the input control because uh, this will drive the compressor harder. Okay, so we're getting some interesting sounds there. Okay, that's uh, clearly different to what we had previously. Let me just play with this attack a little bit more. See, round about there, it's, it's too slow. It's too much like the original attack of the drum. Round about here, maybe that's too much. I'm going to say that's about the sweet spot for me. You'll notice that with the compressor in, because we've increased the input uh, level, then it's making the whole thing sound louder. And it's subjectively, it's very confusing when you compare two sounds and one's louder than the other, because louder always somehow seems to sound better. So as an engineer, you've got to learn how to tune that out. It would be nice to correct the gain so that the compressed version is exactly the same peak level as the uncompressed version. And in theory, that's the right thing to do. But the thing is that you could spend an awful long time doing that. And if I did this for every demonstration that I'm doing now, 
it would mean I'd have to reset the gain every time I change the controls, and that's just going to take forever. So what I'm going to say is that it's a useful skill for a sound engineer to be able to tune out the difference in level and concentrate and home in on the difference in sound texture. That is important because you will be correcting the level later anyway when you found the sound texture that you want. So you can leave that part of it right till the end of the process. So we'll just have to say that tune out the difference in level, tune in on the sound texture. Let's have it again. Okay, let's look at this uh, release control. So let's go all the way to the fastest release. And let's go to a slow release. See, that's coming back up so slowly. That's going to take up several bars of music, so clearly that's too slow. So let's try that. Even then, that's too slow. You see, the next drum hit will have come along by the time the gain has recovered, so that's clearly it's too slow. That's getting more like it. That's getting plausible. Maybe that's too much for today. I'm going to go for that. So let's compare. Okay, we've got a distinctly different sound texture there. You might like it, you might not like it, but it is different. And an important part of production is being able to manipulate the sounds in the way that you want them and not necessarily leave them the way that they, they started out. Let's go on to another track and we'll do something slightly different. We'll go to another plugin and this one is going to be the standard compression plugin that comes with Pro Tools. So it's free. So every digital audio workstation comes with a range of standard plugins. And you think that because they're not costing you anything, effectively, that maybe they're not as good as something that you would pay $100 or more for. So surely, because it's free, it means it's no good. Well, that's not necessarily the case. And if we listen to it, we'll find out what this compressor is capable of. So let's um, set the ratio to, where are we? Oh, I'm just going to type it in. There we go. Eight to one. So we're in the same ratio as we had on the CLA 76. And let's just listen to that straight away. So we're on solo on the right track, just make sure. OK, well, I can hear something, but clearly we're not there yet. Let's try a faster attack. You see, that's so fast now, it's just bringing the whole thing down, and it doesn't actually sound that much different. Let's put some gain in to bring it back up. Oh, it doesn't sound too bad, actually. Yeah, it doesn't sound too bad on the release um, side of it, but the attack... I'm not getting that attack that I want. I want the more incisive attack that I've achieved with the other compressor and with the automation. So let's try and find the right setting of the attack that will achieve that. Let's try a, a higher setting. So we're in the millisecond zone there. So too short, too fast an attack, and it brings the level down too quickly. To slow an attack, and it just lets the initial, the original transient of the drum straight through. So I'm gonna go somewhere around here, I think. Yep, that's gonna do it for me. Okay, Gets, let's go on to the release section. Once again, that's far too slow. Not too bad. I quite like it. But I'm going to go for that slightly longer release. Let's just compare. OK, I think I've got something interesting there. So let's compare these four different versions. So this is the the standard compression plugin. This is the CLA. 
This is the automation and this is the original. So as you can hear, these two, the automation and the CLA are not that different. They're not identical, but you can see the similarities there. This one here. You know, it's in the same zone, but the attack. I've had a play with this, and I can't quite get the attack quite the same as the CLA, and I do prefer the CLA. So what I'm going to say is that, you know, there's nothing wrong with this um, standard plugin. You can achieve some great sounds with it. But in this instance, the paid for plugin is just, to my mind, that little bit better. You might have your own preferences, so just judge it um, on what you think. I do have a peek there so let's just um, let's just bring this down so it's not going to click just compare it with that okay okay peak wise we're pretty much on the same level there so we're comparing like with like okay so we've got a range of compressed sounds there so let's apply it to the whole drum track which is this one that i saved here earlier so we'll unmute that and we'll solo it just to make sure we don't hear anything else and i'm going to copy the cla over i can do this on pro tools quite easily and you should be able to do it in your own digital audio workstation so it's the same settings that we arrived at so let's just go back to the um, edit screen and make a bit of space there now we'll see the whole thing and I'm going to take away that clip gain line because it's a bit unsightly to have around when we don't need it. So here we have it. Here we have the drum track as I quite like to hear it. <laughs> Okay, I'm liking that, um, but I think that I probably should even out the levels just so we can make sure that we're hearing it uh, like for like. What I'll do, I don't know which way shall I do it. What I'll do is I'll duplicate the track and we won't have the insert. So this is the one with the, maybe let's just put that back in here. This is the one with the compressor and this is the one with that. You know the peak levels aren't all that different. Just put that in there. So, look, so if you look at the master fader, you'll see where the peak levels are. I'm just going to go into a section of the track where it's uh, a bit busier on the kick. So that's the original peaking at around minus five. You know, that is um, round about the same peak level. So we are comparing like for like there. So let's just do it again. And uh, we'll finish off the demonstration with this. And I'll compare these two versions. So I'm going to click between that solo and that solo. So you can hear the um, you can hear the differences between the original and the CLA compressed track. So that's it. I'm David Meller, course director of Audio Masterclass. If you want to improve the quality of your work in your home recording studio, 
you might be interested in our music production and sound engineering course, which you can check out at audiomasterclass.com. Thank you for listening. Thank <laughs> you.